So where we left off last time was a look at this modern periodic table. And one of the things that I've been had a little bit of difficulty with is to get the videos to play that accompany this. So what you're looking at is the modern periodic table, uh, which I may have spoken about before, but let's just double check in. We go from Arabic numbers 1 through 18, or you can go from Roman numerals with letters 1 through 8. And we'll talk about the difference between a Roman numeral with an A or a B. Metals are on the left, nonmetals are on the right, and on the metalloid staircase we have the metalloids, elements whose properties are intermediate between those of metals and nonmetals. And one of the things I'd love for you to see is a short video. And if you notice here, I've done a little screenshot of what you'll find on Moodle. And if you click on the one that says link to the BBC History of the Periodic Table, you'll find a delightful video showing how Mendeleev got his insight to recreate the periodic table or to create the periodic table based upon atomic mass. Our new periodic table that we're going to examine now, by uh, refined by Mosley and others, is a periodic table where elements are arranged in order of increasing atomic number. Now you might want to return back to this slide uh, later on in the vodcast. I'll be asking you to watch at any moment in time videos about the trans, uh, uh, transition elements or alkaline metals. So please, if you'd like to wait till the end of the vodcast, feel free. But please do see these. They take 30 seconds to a minute each and they add a lot of information that I wasn't able to incorporate into this vodcast. Okay. So on our modern periodic table, we have vertical columns, which are also called groups or families. Like the members of a human family, elements in the same vertical column often have similar chemical and physical characteristics. As you move down a column on the periodic table, the element's atomic number increases. And as you saw on the previous slide, the Roman numeral groups are followed by a letter A or B. So for example, if I was to ask you what group is chlorine in, using an older system you would say Roman numeral 7A. Using the modern periodic table method with Arabic numbers, you would say chlorine is in group 17. Now the rows that go across are called periods. Remember we talked about the periodic table having periodicity, regularly repeating patterns in the chemical and physical properties of the elements. So each row in the periodic table starts on the far left with a metal and ends on the far right with a noble gas. There are seven periods. Please don't forget that those seven periods are, are linked directly to the seven energy levels that we're aware of in the largest atoms that we've discovered or created so far. And as you go from left to right, from Roman numeral groups one through eight, there's an orderly progression or change in the properties of the elements. And then after you get to column 8, or Roman numeral 8a, or Arabic number 18, then the pattern and properties repeats again. The reason why the first period on the periodic table has only two elements is because all we can have at the first energy level is a spherical s orbital, which can accommodate elements that have no more than two electrons total. So that would be hydrogen and helium. If you go to element number three on the periodic table, its first two electrons would be found at the first energy level. But the third electron in lithium has to be at the next highest energy level. Remember the off-bow principle says to build up, electrons fill in to the next highest level or sublevel. So lithium would also have an electron in Roman numeral group 1a, and it would be in period 2. Remember, the row you are in means that's the row in which your highest energy electrons are, you being an element. Okay, the groups that are designated with an A, Roman numeral 1A through 8A, are often called the main group or representative elements. They do possess a wide range of chemical and physical properties, but as we will learn, the periodicity that we're going to understand, the regular the repeating patterns, are more perfectly revealed when you consider just these eight columns alone. Then there are the groups that are labeled B, B for bad boy of the periodic table. Those are the transition elements, the ones down in the dip in the middle plus the inner transition. And while these are all metals, 
their properties can vary widely from each other um, and often they can do very unique things like have multiple charges on their ions or even have very beautiful colors. So what I would like you to do is take a moment either now or at the end of this mini vodcast to watch the short video about vanadium. It's a transition element that based upon the number of electrons that the atoms can lose can have very different colors as it goes through different what we call oxidation states. Please also watch there is a vi uh, video on the Moodle page that just talks about properties of metals in general. I believe it's called uh, periodic properties metallic character. So make sure you watch those as well as make sure you watch that BBC one. It's pretty cool. So at the tail end of an atom's electron configuration are its valence electrons. Remember we learned in the chapter about electrons those are the highest S and P electrons. You find the biggest big number, the highest principal energy level that an atom might possess, and sum the valence electrons that are in that energy level. Sum up the S plus the P. So for example, every element in group one has only one outermost valence electron, and they all end with something, 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 S1 on their electron configurations. And because of this, atoms in the same group, because they have the same number of valence electrons, have similar chemical properties. So all of the alkali metals, for example, that would be in Roman numeral group 1A, can have a very violent reaction with water. Now remember when we studied the periodic table, we broke up our, our periodic table into blocks and right off the bat you can see a very common error or confusing factor in my opinion. You can have Arabic numbers 1 through 18, but you're supposed to have Roman numerals here with uh, 1 through 8a or with the B or transition group. So try not to make that mistake as it shows here. But to point out that idea of valence electrons again, everyone in Roman numeral column, Roman numeral 3a, have three valence electrons. Two of them are S electrons. That would be these ones right here in the S block. So let's stay in row two. And one of those valence electrons would be a P. So you sum the highest energy valence electrons, add up the S and P's, and the number of your electrons total for valence is your <clears throat> determining what column you're in and also determines what chemical properties you have. Interestingly enough, don't get confused, every element in Roman numeral column 3a has three valence electrons. They do not have the same total number of electrons, just the same number of outermost electrons. Very important distinction. Now metals are elements that we've defined before that are shiny, that's luster. They are good conductors of heat and electricity. They're malleable, meaning they can bend without breaking and um, ductile, you can stretch them into a wire, and most of them, well in fact all of them except for the element mercury, are a solid at room temperature. Most of the metals can very relatively easily lose one, two, or possibly even three valence electrons, and there are some elements that can even lose more. So what I'd like for you to do is to also view the vodcast about the metals, and specifically, there's another one about the alkali metals that are very interesting. So make sure you go back to Moodle and take a look at those two. Um, any metals that are to the left, or well, metals are found to the left of the zigzag staircase that constitutes the metalloids. And hydrogen is on the left of that line, but it is not a metal. It can act like a metal and have metallic properties, but it is itself a gas. So make sure you watch the video on alkali metals. It's kind of cool. It shows them burning up in, ox in uh, water as they produce hydrogen gas that can ignite from the heat of the reaction. So alkali metals are the most reactive of all. They can react with water to form alkaline solution. Alkaline means basic. So this is the point where I would watch that video. Alkaline earth metals form Roman numeral group 2A 
They're a fairly reactive group of elements, but not nearly as crazy as their brothers to the left, and they will form oxides with oxygen. Now all of the transition elements are metals. And I think what I will do at this point in time is that we're going to come to discussion of some of the radioactive inner transition elements or metals. So I will stop here with this podcast, and if you have not already done so, take a look over at Moodle and watch two or three of those videos that I've suggested. Until the next time, I'll see you.